In the last decade, cold water immersion has emerged as one of the most popular post-exercise recovery strategies utilized amongst elite athletes during training and competition. So what are the benefits and the effects on the body? Stay tuned and find out. For sure a little bit. Ice, ice baby. Ice, ice baby. <laughs> oh, okay, yep. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Hi, I'm Christopher Brenner with the Muscle Doc Method, and today I'm absolutely excited to be here with the Lima Lay McFarland, and uh, who will be participating in her very first ice bath. How are you feeling today, Alima? Uh, very nervous. Uh -huh. I mean, I've already told you that I do not like ice baths, uh -huh. but it's a necessary evil. And what do you think? The temperature today, what did we clock it at? Uh, I think it was 53 degrees. Something like that. Yep. Whew. Not th I'm not going below that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cutoff, yes. 53. Just <laughs> ease yourself in there. Just control your breathing and uh, make uh, cold your warm friend. Got it. <laughs> Good times are ready. Nice. Good job. Good job. First, let's talk about weight loss. Taking ice bath has been popularized in part due to the effects of cold on weight loss. One of the body's ways of responding to cold is to increase metabolism to produce heat to warm the body and in the process burn fat. Pretty cool, right? This better be making me skinny. <laughs> <laughs> this process is partly regulated by norepinephrine, which we know is significantly increased by cold exposure by anywhere from two to five fold, depending on the intensity of the cold and the length of the exposure. Norepinephrine increases mitochondrial biogenesis in the adipose and muscle tissue, meaning new mitochondria which are the energy producing powerhouses inside our cells. And the byproduct is the generation of heat, an adaptive mechanism to help warm us up. The good news is that repeated cold exposure boosts your metabolism through the increased energy production that produces heat. One study showed that cold water immersion in 68 degrees for one hour increased metabolic rate by 93% and one hour at 57 degrees increased metabolic rate by 350%. Impressive, right? Next, let's talk about muscle mass, endurance, and recovery. When it comes to cold exposure in the context of exercise, there are two important factors to look at. One, the type of exercise being done, and secondly, the timing of cold exposure in relation to the exercise. Immediately after exercise activity, there is a spike in the production of pro-inflammatory molecules that are important in muscle tissue repair. This is necessary to activate genetic pathways that contribute and play an important role in muscle hypertrophy. An example is our immune system produces high levels of anabolic hormone IGF-1 in response to muscle tissue damage. Next, the body has an anti-inflammatory response to the inflammation that peaks about one hour after training. At this point, some of the anabolic hormones such as IGF-1 return to pre-training levels. In the case of cold exposure or ice baths immediately after training, this may undermine certain beneficial effects that come from the inflammatory response caused by weight training, powerlifting, or strength training. In a 12-week study following 21 physically active men, cold water immersion directly after weight training blunted long-term gains in muscle mass and strength compared to the control group. A better post-workout intervention for strength training would be hypothermic conditioning through sauna use. Check out my video in the link in the description. Let's go back to cold water immersion. What about endurance athletes? Do you remember earlier I was talking about mitochondrial biogenesis? Well, that is important if we want to talk about endurance activity. That's because mitochondria and the density or number of them in the cell affects our aerobic capacity. Mitochondria are what gives us the ability to use oxygen in order to produce cellular energy. And if we have more of them, it can be said we may be more adapted to aerobic activity. Here's how that works. 
Cold exposure activates a gene called PGC1-alpha, which makes more mitochondria in the muscle. More mitochondria per muscle cell directly translates to more aerobic capacity. Exercises that are highly aerobic, such as mixed martial artists, cycling, boxing, or running, has the characteristics of being very metabolically demanding and thus require more muscle fibers in the type 1 configuration that are oxygen using and are fatigue resistant versus type 2 fast twitch muscle fibers used in short term duration for explosive strength. Performance enhancement was shown in endurance athletes that were associated with reduction in inflammation. Too high levels of pro-inflammatory molecules post-exercise can result in acute performance deterioration and muscle damage. In a study including elite tennis players, it showed a two and a half fold decrease in pro-inflammatory markers and a 23% increase in anti-inflammatory properties which play an important role in muscle repair. Lastly, I want to talk about mental focus and mood. Cold water immersion has a profound effect on norepinephrine. What makes norepinephrine so interesting is that it is not only a hormone, but also a neurotransmitter and is involved in focus, attention, and mood. The cold exposure induces significant increases in norepinephrine and is a response mediated by the sympathetic nervous system, our fight or flight response. Decreased norepinephrine transmission is associated with low energy and poor mood as seen in depression and an inability to focus and maintain attention associated with ADHD. In fact, both ADHD and depression are commonly treated with pharmacological targeted norepinephrine. Just how cold and for how long do you have to get in in order to get that norepinephrine hit? There does appear to be a temperature threshold for activating the sympathetic nervous system. For example, cold water immersion at 68 degrees for one hour does not appear to activate norepinephrine release, whereas one hour at 57 degrees increased norepinephrine by 530% and also increased dopamine by 250%. I think you're experiencing a tremendous <laughs> amount of dopamine and norepinephrine uh, after this ice bath. Absolutely. Long durations, however, aren't necessarily required for a potent release of norepinephrine. A long-term study showed that cold water immersion at 40 degrees for 20 seconds increased norepinephrine by 2 to 300 percent. That's quite a jolt. So let's recap. We know the benefits of cold exposure are 1. Weight loss, 2. Increased metabolism, 3. Increased norepinephrine leading to mitochondrial biogenesis, 4. Increased mitochondrial biogenesis leads to improved aerobic capacity, 5. The timing of cold exposure is in relation to the type of training you are doing, 6. Increased endurance performance in athletes, 7. Reduced inflammatory properties leading to faster muscle repair and recovery. 8. Improved mental focus and mental health benefits. Oh, yeah. Yep. Hey, Chris, I think it's time for you to get in the water. You know what? I think it is about time for me to get in, too. Absolutely. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever tried any of the various cold exposure therapies and what benefits you've experienced. And if you enjoyed this video, make my Bible proud, show me some love, and hit that like and subscribe button. Check out the program links below, and I'll see you in the next episode. <gasps> Under? Okay. You didn't duck on you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Woo! Woo! Woo!
feel alive. 